Hey there, my name is Ruven. I'm currently a lab instructor for MEC215 at Concordia University. Um, this course is all about C++ and um, the labs are all about Arduino development. And essentially the idea of this video series is just to provide uh, tools and, and references that students can use and come back to um, even after the labs so that will help them build their final project essentially because the final project is something that's really useful um, essentially as an engineer you kind of want to work on your own engineering project so you can build a portfolio and then when you're at your internships or when you're trying to find an internship or a job you can say hey look I have done these things with my engineering degree and I've learned all about I don't know let's say like uh, embedded systems or whatever right so um, it's something useful to have with you and so, uh, and instead of uh, having to go and, um, I mean, going to the labs is important, but instead of uh, relying on only the labs, now you can come back to these videos in case you forgot a small detail, right? So uh, the idea of these videos is not to follow lab per lab. So um, the first lab might be split into three videos. The second lab might be split into two videos. So I'm not um, doing a lab per video. What I want to do is focus on very specific things um, each video so that you can just go back to those very you know specific parts. You don't need to watch a one hour video. Um, and it's a little bit easier to uh, upload and work with later on. Like if I want to delete a video and change it for something else, it takes two seconds versus if I have an hour video and I want to change something, then I have to re-upload the whole thing or like edit it, whatever. It takes a lot more time. So this video, this first video is going to be all about installing the IDE and just getting uh, familiarized with the tool, uh, how to debug, how to um, do a hello world, very simple things, okay? It's just um, like an opening overview of uh, how to get started. And then we're gonna kind of ramp it up and eventually we're gonna do a lot more complicated things. Now, uh, one thing to notice, uh, or one thing to note, sorry, if you're not from Concordia University and you're using this video, I'm not some sort of Arduino god. A lot of the things that I'm doing uh, are kind of amateur, but are just things that helped me do really well in the course. So uh, take everything I say with a bit of a grain of salt. Um, I just wanted to offer something to my students so that they could reference it later on. That was the idea of this uh, video series and something I want to stress a lot. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start it. So the first thing you want to do is obviously download the software. Uh, for that, I can you can just look up Arduino IDE, and it should be the first link. Um, you want to get one depending on the operating system that you're using. So I'm using Windows, so I got the Windows 8.1 or 10. Um, if you're Linux, you use Linux. If you're using Mac, use the Mac. Do not use this one. This one is the release candidate builds. Um, I think it's the difference is just that one of them is a stable release, and the other one's sort of under testing. That's my understanding. Um, and the reason why you want the stable one is because I had a lot of students come to me with problems connecting their Arduino board to this one. And I, instead of going through it and trying to figure out what was wrong, um, which we tried, uh, we instead decided to just, just go with a stable version. It's a lot easier. I know it works. I've used it many times. I've downloaded it on like three different computers. I haven't used it on Mac, but I've used it on Linux and Windows. and. Yeah, I just know it works. So go with a stable version and uh, everything should work fine. So once you have it and you have installed it, just basically um, this should be your first program. I don't actually remember if they had comments on these functions, but you should have two functions, avoid setup and avoid loop. And um, the idea of these functions are just to help you organize your code. That's how I sh you should think about it. So when you plug your board in, the first thing that gets called after booting is your setup. So the setup function gets run. So anything in here, any code that goes in this function gets run first. After setup is run, what happens is the loop function gets uh, called indefinitely. And it just keeps getting called until you power off or so power off or you exit the program with the exit function. Okay, so um, 
most of your code should be in loop. Although you can sort of avoid loop by making an, uh, an infinite loop here, but you really don't want to do that. I think uh, usually when you're programming, you want to avoid infinite loops as much as you can because then it's harder to debug and it can do some funky stuff. So, and it can be really confusing. Um, I'm not saying using the loop function isn't confusing, but it, I just find it it's a better practice when you're trying to do your labs. Um, okay, so now that we've covered that, we've talked about setup and loop. Um, basically, I want to go over your first Hello World program. And to do that, we're going to go here in Tools. Okay. So the first thing we're going to check is that your board is absolutely connected. Um, you should see at, in here, the board, it should be selected. Uh, it should be Arduino no should be selected. If you don't see it, sorry, I just... <laughs> I just I hit, just hit my mic. Um, if you don't see it, you can go to Boards Manager and you can actually look up um, Arduino Uno and it should be this one, Arduino AVR Boards. So if you don't have this installed, you can install it. Um, and the reason why this is useful is because uh, there's a lot of other Arduino architectures. I had a, I was working with a TNT at some point, so I had to download some, uh, some new one. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you have this downloaded and you have the Arduino Uno here selected. The second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that the port is selected. The port is essentially whatever USB port you have your board connected to. So in my case, it's COM7. Um, you might have COM6, 4, 3, it doesn't matter. As long as it's the proper one and it's selected, you should be okay. The second thing you should note is that on Linux, this is actually not called COM7. It's called, I think it's like a path. So it's like dev slash TTY slash something. Uh, so make sure you select uh, the proper uh, port. Um, you can do this usually it tells you that it's on Arduino Uno or like usually um, it only tells you which ones are being used. It only shows you which ones are being used. Um, yeah, just make sure you select the proper, uh, proper port. Once you have done that, um, I want to sort of show you guys before we start coding uh, the serial monitor. And this here is basically your terminal, right? So when you're uh, working with uh, C++ in Visual Studio or a C Lion, whatever uh, you prefer, you usually have a terminal at the bottom of your uh, IDE that shows you uh, whatever you're C outing something. So if you see out hello world and then you print a new line, that's usually where you see it. The thing with the board here, or the difference, is that when you're printing out, you're using your computer. So it shows you in the terminal. When you're printing it out to the board, if you kind of think about it, you're printing it out to that computer that is connected to yours. So you need to transfer that message to your computer. That's kind of how I understood it. And there's different ways of doing this. Um, or different rates, I should say, at which you can send data back and forth. And that's going to be the numbers here. Um, 9,600 tends to be the standard. At least I see it a lot. Or uh, this one here, uh, a million, a hundred and or 115,200. This one or 9,600, they both, you both tend to see, or you tend to see both a lot. Uh, I'm going to keep it at 9,600. We're not doing anything crazy. We're doing something very basic. So I don't need, um, I don't need to need, I don't need to go too uh, in depth with this. Uh, it's just for you to know, you need to know what number you pick. Because here, when you're going to code, you need to begin that connection. And the way you do it is by typing serial.begin and then the number. So this here is the baud rate. That's what you call it, the baud rate. And this here is a function. And um, the idea of the function, like I said, is simply to begin a connection with your board, okay? Once you have that, you can use two different print uh, functions. So the first one's a serial.print, and I'm just gonna type hello. And the idea of this print is that it doesn't come with a backslash n attached to the end. Uh, and then we have serial.println, so print ln. Uh, which does come with a uh, backslash n at the end. So if we I upload this and I open my serial monitor, I should see hello world. In a second, there we go. So I printed hello first, 
uh, with print, so there's no backslash n, and then I printed world with a space. And if I were to print more stuff, because I did print line, it would go to the next line. That's very important to note. Um, okay, now that we have done a hello world, very simple hello world, I'm going to now um, sort of simulate what reading a uh, sensor would look like. In fact, we're not gonna we're not, not gonna simulate it. I'm gonna do something even simpler. I'm just gonna output uh, a number that's increasing by one because I want to show you a different tool that's very useful, which is a serial plotter. So for this, I'm going to declare a variable called value. You can call this whatever you want. It's just a variable name, and it's gonna be an integer. And I'm gonna set it up here as value equals zero. So again, setup is used for initializing your variables, starting your program, setting up your variables, etc. And in the loop, I'm going to use this value and output it. Serial dot print line value. Um, lastly, we're going to delay 100 milliseconds. Uh, what this does is it, it sort of uh, pauses your program for 100 milliseconds, nothing runs, and then it kind of restarts. So uh, the reason this is useful is because a lot of the times uh, your hardware cannot keep up with the software. Your software is much, much faster than, for example, a uh, servo. So like a little motor that rotates, if I'm doing this, it's just going to be way too fast. Like th without the delay, it the hardware cannot keep up. And sometimes you might actually break it. So uh, keep in mind, delay is something that's very, a function that is very, very useful. So let's go ahead and upload this. And I want to just open the serial plotter right away. Uh, just give it a second. I need to do it again, probably. There we go. It happens sometimes. There we go. It's uploading. Done. Thank you. So let's go ahead and see. So it starts at zero. And you see that it's keep it keeps increasing the value. And why is this useful is because when you're reading a sensor, sometimes it's useful to see the range. You might have a sensor that goes between 40 and 120, and it's just useful to see that it's going to stay in that range. Or sometimes it spikes, and it helps you debug what is happening. The reason why you don't want to do this in the serial monitor, or sometimes you don't want to do this in the serial monitor, is because, and it's going to restart to zero, uh, you see one, uh, but the reason why you don't want to do this is because it, it scrolls down very fast. And even if you turn auto scroll off, I have to kind of scroll up and down to see some errors. Like look at this, there's a random zero, right? It might be easier to see in a plotter than it is to see in a monitor. So it's just another useful tool to have to, at your disposal that you can always sort of uh, reference when you're debugging, uh, especially when you're debugging your sensors and stuff like that. So now that we've covered um, the sort of basis or the basics, the basic tools that you can use for um, programming in your Arduino, I'm gonna end this video. And um, the next video is going to be all about different uh, algorithms that you're gonna use, making timers, working with loops, um, averaging your uh, values and uh, stuff like that. Um, it's gonna be pretty short and uh, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next episode.